My brother Mark has lived a life of destruction for 20 years. He's 41 and he lives in his car. Mark parks his car at the big box store in San Antonio, Texas. I call it urban camping. This is my shower bag. I keep my socks and my t-shirts right here. This is my handy whites right here. This is essential for car camping. A few years ago, he was living in a storage unit. He's very immature, has that Peter Pan syndrome. My brother's always losing things. His wallet's been stolen twice. He's lost cell phones, glasses, keys. He trusts everyone. He's trusted homeless people, and then they've stolen from him. Mark got a job working for a rideshare company. He's had a few accidents. I later learned that he was driving with a suspended license. Mark will not take accountability for his actions. His excuse is, I have a great driving record. Progressive has rated me such and such. I feel like Mark takes advantage of my parents. They've bought him several cars. They've spent thousands of dollars on Mark. My brother is a Christian. Religion definitely makes him oblivious to the consequences of his own actions. He doesn't see the life of destruction that's his path. Okay, Jill, I'm glad you're here. You're concerned about him, right? Yes, sir. What's your concern? What's gonna happen bad if, let's, let's talk worst case scenario in your view. I'm concerned for his safety, his health, um, his well-being. Living in a car is not healthy. It's not something we ever envisioned growing up middle class. It's not safe. Yeah. I mean, he's parking in parking lots, and they're dark, and he's out there like a bullseye shooting mm -hmm. target. That's not safe, right? Right. Mental health-wise, is it in his best interest? I mean, he's living in a small space and which by the way he doesn't own yes it's leased it's wrecked it's in bad condition yes it, it's in bad condition and so i'm thinking self-esteem wise he may put a spin on this but at some point doesn't he have to s pull that seat back up and look in that rear view mirror and say i'm 41 years old living in a broken down toyota I mean, we didn't know the condition of it. We didn't know it was this bad. I don't yeah. even know why he's still driving it. It looks like it's totaled, but um, it's... Yeah, I wouldn't want to like go a long way. He's proud so. of it. Yeah. He's proud of the car, now, even in the condition it's in. Well, I mean, it is, it does roll. <laughs> yeah, um, <laughs> true. <laughs> but um, now you say he believes that if he prays and gives himself to God, he will be blessed with a dream wife, job, and children. Yes, he doesn't believe that it's working hard, being motivated, achieving your goals, setting goals. It's all about just what you, you and your relationship with God, you're gonna wake up one day and your life's gonna Pray to God be, you'll have a family. Yes. Well, he's gonna, gonna need like a, a suburban or an SUV yeah. or something. Yeah, yeah. for a, them all to live in, exactly. If, if he gets a family, right? Exactly. <laughs> What's he say when you challenge him on this? Oh, he says that I don't know what it's like to live on a single income because I'm married and which I do live on a single income because I'm a stay-at-home mom, but <clears throat> he just says that I'm on my high horse and that I don't, I'm judgmental, that I don't understand how it is to live in poverty and, um, you know, that's not what we wish for him. We want his life to be better, but every advice, all the tools we've given him, he doesn't listen. He just knows everything.